So I removed all the um, set, Allen key set screws on the uh, motor itself. I've removed the backing nuts as well on this side. It's just the cable. And now we have to push down on this motor to push this assembly out. You've got to watch your fingers because there are very strong magnets inside of these. There you go. And voila, we have one stator assembly. The stator assembly is now in pieces. As you can see, she's a pressed steel stator plate. The amount of copper in here looks relatively reasonable for a 500 watt. I think this is literally a thousand watt with, um, you know, 36 volt rating. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, the cable, as you can see, is very damaged. Like, unfortunately, she is bad. I'm going to need to re replace this cable. But yeah, um, there are hole sensors just there. The condition actually looks all right in here. It looks really good in here. Not going to lie. Um, a bearing feel smooth. There's a little bit of debris. But there's nothing, you know, no mega chipped magnets or anything like that. So yeah, not bad at all. Um, no burnt windings that I can see. There has been a bit of moisture getting there, but the stator laminations are not that bad. This is one of those Volumort motors, you can tell, because they actually used bamboo. This bit's not even the right length, but hey, it's in there. To hold everything together, yeah, it is actually bamboo, I'm not kidding. But it works, you know. I've had 6,000 watts in one of these. The only reason it blew up is because I was showing off holding it for too long. And she just gets too hot. This steel stator plate is not the best for distributing heat. You can make things a bit better by putting stator aid in there. But really you should just buy a bigger motor, <laughs> if I'm totally honest. Um, but yeah, this thing is in pretty good condition. Apart from the broken spoke. Where do you go to? The broken spoke goes... Trying to find its... Oh, it's over here. Here we go. It goes over to this island here. So it's just popped through its hole. I can probably bend it back and then put a blob of weld on there. And we'll be all good to go. Okay, so I put some heat shrink on the damaged inner cables. There was a few damaged ones. I pulled all these out. Um... There is actually enough. I don't have enough of this cable lying around. I have like the proper uh, hub motor cable. I'd have to order one and that involves waiting. So I'm going to repair by soldering onto these. I might, because I've got shorter pieces of it, cut these in here and extend them inside and then push this through a bit more. Um, likewise, if you have a bit sticking out, it might be possible if there's no short circuits inside here to just do it at this end and then push them through if you're not confident about pushing them through the actual spindle. You will need to heat this up, I had to heat this up with a hot air gun to melt the adhesive inside so you can actually get these cables to uh, move. Um, because they are literally just, they're really tight and stuck in there and they put like a, an epoxy, or some kind of, not really an epoxy, but some kind of adhesive to stop them from, uh, you know, flopping around in the breeze. I would recommend replacing that with a bit of sealant or some silicon sealant or something like that, or just any kind of like Yahoo glue or... Yeah, that kind of st you glue that kind of stuff because if you need to do it again, you don't want to be um, you don't want to be uh, fighting it, so to speak. You could spend ages fighting some really good adhesive, um, and there's no point. You might as well just you know put some weakish adhesive in there just to stop them flapping around. But yeah, so there's actually enough on here that we can poke it through, and it should work hopefully. Um, as long as there's no internal breaks, I didn't check for continuity or anything like that, but you know. It'll work or it won't. <laughs> okay, one thing I forgot to mention, when putting these on, you want to make sure you pop your heat shrink on and then slide, solder it and slide it over. Keep it quite a way away from the heat shrink, because otherwise you're going to heat shrink your heat shrink before you want to heat shrink your heat shrink. Um, so yeah, there's three phase cables. You're done, just... It's cold enough now, I can slide that over. Just using a simple lighter. I've got the battery-powered... Um, Parkside hot air gun, but and it works, but it's a little bit on the slow side. If I'm totally honest, they're all right. They could have done with like a 36 volt version or something like that, and it would have gotten a little bit hotter. I mean, it's meant to be you know a hot air gun for like stripping paint off and stuff like that. There is no way that thing is going to strip any paint off of anything. Um, this is really terrible paint. 
change hands, what's holding the camera. <laughs> burn yourself with a lighter, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, right, I'm going to put the camera down now and carry on with the rest of it. And yeah. <laughs>